Welcome to ARI 2024, Alicante Refractiva Internacional. This is the session of clinical cases with a special interest. And it is a great honor for me to present and to introduce uh, Dr. Maria Fidelite La Paz. Uh, she comes from Barcelona, from Clinica of Talvis, and she is one of the most experts in the field of the reconstructive ocular surface and also in keratoprosthesis. So, Maria, um, uh, you, we hear you with uh, illusion with your cases. Thank you so much, Maria. Uh, thank you, everybody, for letting me present this case. So when I give my talks on keratoprosthesis, the basic thing that we have to check is the anatomy of the ocular surface. As you can see, if you have a wet blinking eye, then the most popular keratoprosthesis nowadays is the Boston keratoprosthesis type 1. But if you have severe ocular surface disease, when you have a dry, non-blinking eye, then the best option and still the gold, gold standard is the modified osteodontal keratoprosthesis. I have experience with both kinds of surgeries, but through the years, I've realized that there are some cases in the gray zone, as you can see in, this, um, in, the, in the center. So I'm going to present this case. As you can see, this is a patient who has a non-dry as a dry, non-blinking eye. This is an 86-year-old male who was referred to me from Northwestern Spain for a type 1 Boston Capro. This patient was diagnosed to have ocular cicatricial pemphigoid, although he was negative on conjunctival biopsy. He was on immune suppression with rituximab, and he had been blind for 10 years bilaterally. He also had multiple surgeries of the ocular patient, of the ocular, uh, multiple surgeries of the ocular surface. So this patient, was he for a type 1 Boston K-Pro? For me, it was not a case because he had keratinized ocular surface and simblepharon. So Boston type 1 K-Pro will not work in this case. Could I have done a modified osteodontal keratoprosthesis using his K9 tooth? No, because this patient had noble teeth. Could I have done a tibia keratoprosthesis? Neither could I have done this because the patient had severe osteoporosis because of his age. Could I have done a type Boston keratoprosthesis? I could have, but this, um, this implant is not easily available in Europe. It does not have the CE mark. So what other options do I have for my patient? So what I did was to fuse my knowledge of both the osteodontal keratoprosthesis and the Boston K-Pro. So what I did first was to do a stage one surgery using ocular surface reconstruction, um, implanting oral mucosa all the way to the rectile muscle insertions and furnaces the way that I would in an osteodontic keratoprosthesis surgery. And three months later, I did the same, second stage surgery when the mucosa was already well vascularized, as you can see on the right-hand side. And this anterior segment OCT image shows a very beautiful mucosa on top of the cornea of the patient. So the stage two, what I did was to lift up the mucosa of the patient the way I would do with a modified osteodontic keratoprosthesis, and then I implanted a type 1 Boston K-Pro. Luckily, the patient's own cornea was clear and transparent, and then um, this patient had a very good result. So this patient is now five years out. He has uncorrected visual acuity of 0 0.2, and best corrected of 0 0.55. This patient has a visual field of 40 to 50 degrees. As you can see in the pictures, even if the, the surface is really dry, the Boston Capro is well protected. You can even see parts of the iris, and this is how the uh, visual field of the patient is. And you can see the anterior segment OCT and how beautiful the ocular surface is. This was a case that I was able to publish in 2002 with my colleagues. This procedure could also be done in a type 2 Boston K-Pro. Like this case, which I also published, the patient did not want to have his eyes um, fused. He did not want the aesthetics to be um, like the lid covering the Boston K-Pro. So I did this case together with our colleagues from Northern Spain, and this was also published. So why did I alter my technique? I think that necessity is the mother invention. The oral mucosa is actually my best friend. There are selected cases in the gray zone. So what I did was a hybrid between the Boston type one, which is easily available and surgically less difficult, and my knowledge of the modified osteoodontal keratoprosthesis. This stemmed from a meeting in 2018, the KPRO study group meeting, 
where my colleague in Frampton, the Philippines, Dr. Padilla, presented some of her cases. Other options would be the LVP keratoprosthesis in India, presented by Basu et, um, and, and his colleagues. However, it does not have the CE mark. So I think the, the fusing of the, uh, the surgery using oral mucosa on top of the Boston Capro is that the patients have an option for better aesthetics. And that, for example, if you have retinal glaucoma problem, it is much more accessible for a surgeon than it is in an osteodontic prosthesis. So I hope you like this case. Thank you so much. Spectacular, Maria. Thank you very much. And uh, beautiful, spectacular case in expert hands like yours. I would like to ask you, uh, what is the most frequent complication with oral mucosa uh, transplantation? Um, if you do a two-stage surgery using oral mucosa, when you do a Boston K-Pro, the surgery, I mean, the results be will be better because you would be having a vascularized pedicle flap. If you do it in one stage, what I mean to say, you put the mucosa and then you do the Boston in the same stage, you have higher chances of your mucosa failing because you have a graft on top of another graft. So I think the trick is doing it in two stages. And that's what I have learned doing the modified osteodontal keratoprosthesis all these years. So um, wonderful, and maybe uh, this is going. You are going to. This is what you are going to do next time uh, with your next Boston Type One keratoprosthesis instead of using of contact lens. Um, it depends on the case. If I have an intermediate case, an intermediate risk case for the Boston keratoprosthesis, where I have doubts if this patient will have corneal lysis or cornea, um, corneal necrosis, then I would prefer to use the oral mucosa than I would the, um, the contact lens because the, the oral mucosa, it really protects the ocular surface and it seals off the edges of the, the Boston K-Pro so you are less prone to have infections. Thank you very much. Thank you for your generosity and thank you for your lecture and thank you to, for staying with us in Nari 2025. Thank you so much. It's been my pleasure, Maria.